Laugh Rouse Radio Show has been known to play some music and say some words that could be very well interpreted as inappropriate by some of the more sensitive and younger listeners out there in Radio Land. Fortunately for LOE Radio, WNURFM finds this type of talk, ideas, and media to be artistically and significant for the greater good of mankind. We are only allowed to broadcast this type of entertainment between very specific set of hours due to the current decency tolerance of the faculty, which is, for some arbitrary reason, 11.30 p.m. to 6 a.m., rather than the official guidelines drawn up by the FCC regarding safe harbor for all of radio. I can't hear nothing. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. That's what's up. Welcome aboard. It's the Laugh Rails Radio Show here on WNUR-FM, Evanston, and Chicago. My name is Tim Aradichek, your freeform community DJ, and I'm joined in studio with resident mixologist Jay Sal. What's going on, Timmer? What's up, Chicago? What's happening, buddy? Nothing much, man. You're happening, man. I know you're on cloud nine right now, sir. Yeah. It's a- a- have you slept at all? Have you been on a bender like you have seen, or what? <laughs> what have you been doing? Yeah, I've been on a I've been on a tear since Thursday. Well, uh, typically it's like a Cubs bender and stuff. Tim, it's just called uh, it's just called Wednesday Thursday. Yeah, it's just the, the average end of the week for me. <laughs> uh, but if you haven't noticed, Chicago has been celebrating a little bit the last couple of days because the Cubbies are world champions. They are world champions, sir. My hats off to them. I'm very happy as a White Sox fan, as a devoted White Sox fan. I'm very happy for the city of Chicago to say that we have in our lifetime, Timmer have seen a championship in all of the major four major sports. Yeah. We saw the uh, greatest Super Bowl team in the 85 Bears. Mm -hmm. We saw the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan, and the Bulls dominate the 90s. We've seen uh, the resurgence of, actually, we saw the uh, Chicago White Sox win theirs in 2005, which I was very happy for. Um, The Blackhawks resurgence there with with, uh, our good friend John McDonough. And revitalizing that team, getting him back on TV, and more importantly, becoming kind of a dynasty. And now uh, the 108-year wait is over. <laughs> we can no longer say, um, wait till next year uh, to the Cubs fans, as the Chicago Cubs have won the World Series in dramatic fashion. Timmer and audience, not only breaking a tie in the late innings of Game 7, not only in extra innings, not only after a half-hour rain delay, but more importantly... From a three to one deficit, we were sitting here last Saturday night. Remember saying basically after those uh, all those runs that were scored by the Indians, we're like it's pretty much over, right? Yeah. A lot of us thought that. I know that you, amongst other fans, always found a way to uh, say, "Hey, my team's going to pull it out," some you know somehow, and they did. And look at us now, man. I, ne- I never would have thought in a million years that I would see the Cubs win the World Series, and here we are. Yeah, one thing to say about this team is there is no quit in them. And they proved that all year. They were supposed to be here, though. Yeah. From And, and we saw from the opening pitch um, back in March and April that they were the best team in baseball. Even they were down many runs late in the game, they found a way to pull it out. Um, what's good about this, what's scary good about this team is that they're so young. Yeah. They have a young core. And they're only going to get better, and they're only going to win more titles. So we're talking about a possible dynasty. I mean, like, easily, like, the Giants, San Francisco Giants, maybe the Boston Red Sox, even the uh, Stinky Cardinals now, they have something they will <laughs> to puff their chest out about, yeah. about those Redbirds, those pesky Redbirds. Yeah. Um, they're no longer um, just the lovable losers. They are the lovable champions. And what estimated 5 million people attending Grant Park and the parade um, Friday morning uh, into the afternoon, but unreal, man! This postseason run by the Cubs. I mean, Theo Epstein came in five years ago, almost to the date, and got rid of bad contracts. I remember personally saying that getting rid of Alfonso Soriano, Mister Forty Derek Forty, Lee, yeah. Derek Lee. I mean, you know, when Derek Lee was still productive, but like Soriano was was an All Star. 40, 40, 40 home runs and 40 stolen bases. Yeah, until he came and played for the Cubs. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. for, former Washington um, player and also for the Yankees. Yeah. And he wasn't able to do anything with the uh, with, with the Cubs. So and he, he got rid to, of that contract. He used to do that crazy little bunny hop to catch pop flies. <laughs> right, right. But, I mean, just overall, I mean, but, I mean, basically what I'm saying is that he did the right thing. He, you know, cut down on the payroll, bought in a winning mentality that he had already won and, and broke the curse of, of the Boston Red Sox before that. And, hey, give it up to the Ricketts, man, buying the team at the right time and saying we're not going to uh, we're not going to settle for anything less than a World Series championship. That is correct. And, we're not, uh, we're not going to move our stadium, more importantly. It's still going to be within the neighborhood, one of the few neighborhood stadiums in the uh, league. 
and and also be able to say, you know, we're city of champions, and this just proves and everything that anything is possible. So for all those devoted fans uh, that have suffered through decades and disappointments and the Bartmans and an 03 and the 84, you know, division losers. 89, and 89, 89 yeah. and everything. I mean, you can name and so on. And the uh, egocentric, self-absorbed guys like Sammy Sosa and everything who were just about the long ball. And, ooh, baseball been very, very good to very, me. Very, very good. And basically not doing anything and not even able to help them, you know, go over that hump. I mean, just his personal accolades with being going down in that year that magic year in 98 with Mark McGuire when they basically revitalized baseball. The same season they found a cork bat, too. It finds, they found the cork <laughs> bat, and they have an asterisk, basically. A lot of people want him and Barry Bonds have an asterisk because that's the juicing years. Yeah. But nonetheless, I mean, to over overcome all that and to say, and and just, you know, they're doing it with class, too. I mean, what what, what a story. What is, I mean, this is probably going to revitalize um you know everything about Chicago baseball, and hopefully the White Sox. Uh, you know, I don't know where they're going to be going because all we're guaranteed is a rate, Timmer, with an yeah. arrow going down. That's basically our stadium right there, as far as on the south side goes. The most watched uh, World Series in the last right. twenty-seven years. Was it a twenty? Help me up with the numbers here, because I'm not really good with the Nielsen ratings. Was it a twenty-five percent share? Yeah, is that right? something like. 20. So one in four households were watching the World Series in Chicago. Yeah, and then awesome. uh, unbelievable. The- the parade gathered the seventh most humans in one place in uh, history. Do you um, really believe it was five million? Uh, yeah. Did you go? No, hell no. I had to work. I was calling you too. I was actually trying to get a hold of you. To I, see if you're you know be what? There. And I had to work like around the area too, so I had to like circumvent. Oh roads. god, that was Just, horrible. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Why would you do this on a Friday afternoon? Is what I'm asking. Is like you know, I mean, all these kids had the day off of school before they announced the parade. And then uh, I guess when they announced the parade, the other rest of the schools got the day off. So now right, you got right. all it was these, a holiday, right? And I'm sure it'll be a holiday next year. Remember, remember the second <laughs> of November, right? Uh, 2016, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, the Cubbies uh, they did go to Grant Park from uh, Wrigley Field, where a not a service, but the featured event was hosted by none other than Mr. Pat Hughes. Yes, sir. Uh, the legendary Cubs broadcaster who saddled up with Ron Santo for many a year. Uh, rest in peace, Mr. Santo. Rest in peace, Mr. Santo. Rest in peace, er, uh, Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks. Um, and Harry. Harry. Of course, Harry Carey. And this is up for everybody. I mean, think about it. All the, uh, uh, the legends that you can name um posthumously and that i mean think about it i mean that they li- lived breathed and basically died you know bleeding cubby blue and another first happened on saturday night live tonight when yeah the, the show that the show i'm sorry the show that bill murray made famous not the way around because he is one of their biggest uh superstars and biggest comedians um, on the planet and yeah but he never he didn't come from there he came from uh the groundlings but I mean, still, I mean, he basically cut his teeth at SNL, like all of them did. Like uh, he was Chevy never Chase. a cast member on SNL. Bill Murray, yeah, yeah absolutely, he was. When? Are you kidding me? He was in the inception of, of the Saturday Night Live. Not with like Eddie Murphy and them. No, Eddie Murphy came out in the eighties, my friend. He's I'm talking a, about 70, 75, he's man. He's from Second City, dude. He's, he was not. Mm, yeah, okay, a New he's Yorker. from Second City, but no, he's he's no, he he. You, you really don't remember that? No. Oh, uh, man. Give me a name of skit that he's in. Um, He did the Star Wars theme. Star Wars, nothing oh, but Star yeah, Wars. Oh, yeah, that's right. There yeah, you go. Yeah, come on now, man. I don't think, I think he was just a guest. I'll have him with Tim is smoking. Just a I, little puff. I don't think he was a, a featured act. He was a hey, guest. Are you kidding me? He he him, a, Chevy Chase, Dan Aykroyd. I really? don't remember him being a Oh, cast man, no, member. he was a huge, Gilda Radner, everybody, Garrett uh, Garrett Morris, everybody. Yeah, Garrett Bill Murray Morris. was a, <laughs> Gil, uh, Bill Murray was a featured act in SNL, man. He's a legend on that show. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't know that? No, it's probably besides it's too early for my time anyway. <laughs> of course, not for my time too, but I still respect that uh, old comedic genre and uh, just basically when a, what a legend. Eddie Murphy said it best when it's basically like the Harvard uh, School um, for Comedians. If you can make it on SNL, you could basically make it anywhere. I mean, think about all the uh, superstars, including Eddie Murphy himself, Will Ferrell, you know, Adam Sandler, how much money that they've gone to make in their careers. But yeah, Bill Murray was a big part of SNL. Back in the embryonic stages. So and we're going to play that little skit because it's already... I think this is going viral. This is huge. It's already on Facebook. Apparently right. the Cubs and Bill Murray featured together singing um, Go so Cubs it's, Go. It's, I see Ben Zorbis. I see uh, Rizzo. 
I see who else is who else is there? Who is that? Uh, it's Bill Moore. It's Bill Murray. That's uh, the catcher, Ross. There too. All right. It's uh, Ben Dexter Zorbis. Fowler. It's Dexter Fowler, and it's uh, yeah. So Rizzo, R I Z Z O. Frank Rizzo. All right. So we'll play right. this. Look ahead. Baseball season's underway. Well, you better get ready. It's a brand new day. Why would they? Uh, why would you sing this? Why not? This is the song that I've been has been haunting my dreams. They sound terrible. I want one of those sweaters for Christmas, Jay. I can see one of those barbershop quartet hats, Tim. Yeah. The little uh, wicker hat with the red name. There you go, right? What do you say? The Cubs have already won yesterday. Uh, there's supposedly another skit where they're all strippers. Really? Yeah. Maybe if I search through this website, they'll they'll have it. No, I don't. Okay. It. But uh, you know what, Jay? What's why up, don't, sir? Why don't you let this homeboy in the building? Cause he, homeboy, he ain't got no way in. He has no way in. Our fa- our friend Larry, our MC, right? The resident MC. The resident MC. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, listeners, I shall return. I'm playing doorman. Because I'm the brown one of the group, so <laughs> I will be right back. <laughs> yes, sir, Miss Daisy. Why don't you uh, fix up the lawn while you're out front, too? Oh. Uh, hey, refer your calls to Timber, man. He said that. Every code 847-866-9687. Again, if you wanted to call WNUR, the phone number to do so is every code 847-866-9687. And we got a hell of a lot of show left for you tonight because in less than 45 minutes we turn our clocks back one hour so that means if you're standing in a bar right now you get to push off last call for one extra hour so consume those alcoholic beverages and consume them with uh you know care because you don't want to be out there acting a fool like that drunk ass cub fan at game seven who got his face knocked off uh, did you guys see that? That that uh, yeah, right on the street, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> Dude, saw that. Like you knew it was coming too. Like sucker, you know what is it with sucker punches as of lately? Well, that's why they're easy, man. And no, nobody here is a boxer. I mean, nobody on the street they're fighting. So these guys are already, you know, four, five, six, seven cocktails in. Yeah, and you know some nice alcohol and beverages. Everybody's feeling the pride, and I don't know this guy's. I mean, he felt like you know like a. Bad sack of potatoes, man. Oh, he had I mean, this guy was you could have yeah. sneezed on this guy, he would have been knocked out. Yeah, but see, why is it always the drunk guy that wants to start trouble? Because know? they're the ones that <laughs> basically feel no shame. Yeah, they're not within their no uh, pain either. Right, they're not within their right mind, and it's easy for them to just mouth off. You know, remember we saw that after the Jag. I mean, two fans were fighting over the Jaguars and the Bears, man. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah, video I that went that, viral yeah. and. The guy got kicked in the face, and I was like, really, dude? Yeah. I mean, over the Jaguars and the Bears. And it was some old-ass white guy in the Bears jersey, right? right. It's yeah. always an old-ass white guy in the yeah. Bears jersey, Tim. Is it really? I think so. I mean, there's some there's some, uh, some old-ass brown people that like the Bears, too, Jay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Most of us can throw a one-two combination and a right cross, my friend. Uh, well, I don't know about me. Huh? I, ain't got no ba- I ain't got no training. <laughs> uh, the best I could do is throw some at him and run. There you go. And that's what you should do when confronted by an assailant who wants to beat you up over your favorite sports team. I don't think so. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> teach their own, but I ain't going to stick around when the cops show up. Exactly. Neither am I. Because believe me, if I'm getting a fight with like three racist white guys, I'm not going to fare really well. No? But that's just my opinion. <laughs> I don't know, man. It seems like the racist dudes are the ones that can't fight. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to start up all this trouble and right. then 
you know. I, I got them hands and they got them lawyers, man, so yeah. I'm not going to win. Or or they got like 15 of them. <laughs> they're all brothers and cousins. Right. Story of my life. No, fine. Uh, <laughs> so let's, let's give a brief recap of what's been going on in the city as well as the country in the last week. And then uh, we'll take a music break and then we'll get settled in with other stuff after that. But uh, October proving to be the deadliest month in Chicago for gun violence this year as we reach over 600 homicides. Yowza. Uh, brought on by gun violence. Uh, it's it's getting out of control, goddammit. I don't know what to do. And Rom certainly ain't helping matters. Uh, Rauner ain't helping nobody. At all. And these fools are voting on different sides of the aisle, so obviously they're not, you know, there's no partisanship there. Right. So they're not going to work together at fixing the city's problems, but, um, you know, that's that's politics. You live in the number one state for pol- political co- corruption, so... Of course you do. I mean, what else are you going to expect <laughs> from your, your elected officials? Uh, the elections are coming on Tuesday. Oh, I'm scared. Why is that, Jay? Think about it, man. Lesser two evils is what this uh, should be called. I just came from watching the uh, the Pacquiao evil of two Jesse, evils. The uh, Pacquiao Jesse Vargas fight. It was the legend versus the champion. This election should be called the lesser of two evils. Man, it should be. <laughs> it should be. Absolutely. Yeah. Think about it, man. You're you're basically. But I mean, every isn't every election about the lesser of two evils? Yeah, or? but uh, I mean, just blatantly the way that it's been. I mean, been, I think it's more permanent. <laughs> this year, <laughs> I, I can't think of two candidates. Maybe what Dukakis and Bush in '88. You said Bush, <laughs> <laughs> and I said Dukakis. Dukakis. <laughs> I can't think of two more candidates that people have been totally ambivalent about since then. I mean, you know, I mean, Bill Clinton came out, charmed the pants out of the country, and you know, played saxophone on Arsenio. On Arsenio. Arsenio. Remember, he was wearing like the the players only jacket too. He, 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 actually, he was in a suit, but he was in some really cool uh, Ray Bands. How old yeah, was that? Yeah, I, I think I was like seven. And right, it, right. <laughs> yeah, right. And I remember that, and it was such a cool thing to, to, to see and to be part of. And then he won the reelection against Bob Dole in 96. Bill Clinton, Mr. Bob Dole. That's right. Bob Dole. Bob Dole's not like this. Bob Dole's not like that. That's not what Bob Dole likes. Um, he was also um, basically ga- uh, paved the way for, you know, call it what you will, but the recount in Florida with George W. W. winning. And, um, you know, that ha- you know, we know what happened there. And then came uh, eight years of bad W, which <laughs> bought on our bad Chicago w. president. Bad W. <laughs> right. Yeah. The first minority, first African-American president and Barack Obama. Love him or hate him. I mean, it was part of history. So now we are ready to choose between the woman that can't be honest and has some skeletons in her closet. Some? Some. She got and, a legion of skeletons in her closet. And the guy who basically is the multi-millionaire uh, real estate mogul who um, says and does what he wants. So and why that? shouldn't he? He's made a fortune on the corruption that is the political system. Very true. And uh, why not throw it back in their face for a couple of months, man? Because you're not supposed to do that. Oh, who gives a damn? Who I, I want to see. Watch it now. I want to see him lay it all out. Call everybody. What you know? Call it and like he has. Is. He yeah. has. And then everybody. I really, I really thought this was going to be Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump, and it wasn't. <laughs> It and I would have loved to see Bernie just school him, man, and, and the debates. Just take him to town and stuff. I don't know. Bernie's got a he's got his own problems too. He vo- he voted ninety three percent in step with Hillary. So well, he had to, man. Well, you can't beat him, join him, right? Yeah, BS, true. man. What he could have ran independent. Yeah. I don't know no, about he, nobody that, can man. run independent. The, the last independent person that won the presidency was Abraham Lincoln. There you go. <laughs> That's true. true. Honest That's Abe. True. That is very true. And then he went to the theater. We saw what happened there. So the elections are Tuesday. Make sure you get out there and vote or burn Please down the voting vote, facilities. <laughs> that's, uh, I'll be staying home. You guys can have your... You're not going to vote? Hell no. Oh, that's not no, good. That's not want to. I don't want cool. to be responsible for either one of these fools getting in there. I don't either, but I'm still going to do it as my civic duty. No. no I you going to vote, Larry? Nope. I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote, too. You could have already voted today. They had early polling already. Nah, I'm, 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 I don't trust that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it like a Latino, man. I'm going to wait until the last second of Thank vote. Thank you. So it looks I'm like... CP time. <laughs> <laughs> looks like the entirety of the media is favoring 
well, has been favoring Clinton over Trump. Uh, Illinois Republicans like Bruce Rauner and the Ricketts family are, are on the, the coattails of Donald Trump. Right. While Rom and anyone else who doesn't want dead fish sent to their home from Rom are in Camp Clinton. Of course <laughs> they are. <laughs> you guys hear about that? How he sent dead fish heads? To I don't. I don't another senator. It. I'm sure. Uh, Trump. Dead fish heads. He he sent fish heads to like another congressman, like a Republican. He's is this like, his Godfather? That's yeah. Talking? It's exactly who he You'll thinks be he is. With the fishes. But yeah. Uh, liberals are threatening to retaliate on hackers if Trump wins. Uh, hey, is, is 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 real in the in, in the uh, Senate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's all gangster in there. <laughs> we we see them. They're all polite, and nice on TV, but then they're like, "Hey, fool." Uh, it's too bad that Manny Pacquiao is not a uh, natural born citizen because I want to see him knock somebody out. Oh, man. While Trump threatens to use his money to investigate the Clinton Foundation and their ties to con- corruption if he loses, uh, Clinton's top aide, Huma. Who? Huma. Huma. Huma? Who is also Huma. the wife of former congressman and current penis picture peddler, Anthony <laughs> Weiner. You said Weiner. <laughs> Found with printouts of several of Clinton's deleted emails and is now seeking asylum from testimony. So You should throw them all in asylum, in my opinion. So yeah, some of the deleted sure. emails that were on Clinton's server turned out to be printed out by this woman and were on their way to be given to somebody, nobody knows who, and she don't want to talk now. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, celebrity news Mel B Also known as Scary Spice Is coming to Chicago To star in a Broadway musical Also known as wow. Eddie Murphy's Baby Mama <laughs> Is that One of them really? Oh yeah yeah They had a kid, kid together oh. He's got like 10 kids man Man how could you Eddie have... Murphy Eddie Murphy's got a kid With Scary Spice man. He got many babies He's got many many babies Wow He's like Mike Tyson Said back in the 90s Like I'd afford a kid With many 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 Beautiful women Yeah <laughs> Uh, uh, that's what money do. No. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Also in celebrity news, Zendaya and her weed hair, <laughs> weed hair is looking to start a fashion line here in Chicago. Oh, great. Uh, a new company emerges called RCN to launch a new gigabit web service to compete with the likes of Comcast as well as AT&T. Nice. Giggity, wow. giggity bit. Giggity, giggity bit. Giggity. <laughs> That'd be funny. I'd like giggity. to hear that. I would like that, too. Uh, any news we covered the parade Cubs winning in grand fashion? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Probably the, the newest. The is over. Probably also the newest biggest choke in sports history by the Cleveland Indians. So they come back from 3-1 against Golden State in the NBA Finals, but they cough up a 3-1 lead in the World Series. Seems like karma to me. Seems like karma. Yes, um, sir. So, yeah, then again, they didn't have LeBron James on the field either, man. So, what are you going to do? That's true. Uh, ben Zorbist, uh, and, you know, World Series MVP. Zobrist. Two-time uh, World, uh, World Series champion last year with the Kansas City Royals. That's true, yeah. And talk about going out with a bang. And Grandpa Ross. Grandpa Ross. <laughs> Grandpa Ross. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. Get a homer. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I was having some arguments about Madden's coaching that game because he overcoached. He certainly went right. to the bullpen way too many times, yeah, too early, did. too often. Yeah. And one of the saving graces of that, some of that stuff was that he brought in Ross with Lester. Right. And he hit that home run. Otherwise, the Cubs would have been down after they scored again. Very true. Yeah. And then who knows how it might have went. But I'm. I think the whole world was on their toes when they saw that. <laughs> I'm also a firm. I'm also a firm believer that uh, that rain delay cost Cleveland their momentum. Well, they. I'll tell you, Francona said he's like, man, I couldn't wait to go to the toilet and drop one, <laughs> as opposed to, uh, who was the one? Was it uh, Russell? Who was it that bought them all together? That basically, uh, you know, got the tribe together, got the group together, rather, and gave a motivational speech. And oh, said, hey, it was uh, Jason right. Hayward. Jason Hayward bought them all together and did the right thing and said, all right, guys, we, we're still in this, and we can get this done. And sure enough, they did, man. Yeah. I mean, that was in dramatic fashion. Yeah. It was a great game for what it was worth, man. I you mean, know again, what, though? Man, I, I, I wish I could have. I wish. 
I wish we could have heard like what was going on in in the Cleveland locker room cuz right. like you you got to think <laughs> you got to think that the the they're giving the same speeches, you know? Like I think LeBron James went in there and gave him <laughs> Here, this is this is all right, I'm glad you brought that up because this is another thing I want to mention about What's that? <laughs> the celebrity surrounding all of the the sports things like Okay. Okay, look. I, I understand Bill Murray's a goddamn sports fan and he loves the Cubs, and he's but been for his whole life. There's no reason he needs to be in a locker Locker room with them. <laughs> he got invited. No, 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 huh? no, no. Yeah, he was invited, but I'm saying there's no reason for him to be there. No, him as well as an Eddie Vedder character. Eddie Vedder. Well, I'm sick Eddie of Vedder see, I'm sick of seeing this dude's face in the Cubs games, man. <laughs> I'm sick of that song, man. That sucks. Oh God, how many bad songs are there? Look, I lot, I did us all a favor by by not playing the Cubby Chubby song. <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, oh, also during the parade, they dyed the Chicago River Cubby blue. Absolutely, really? Yeah, it didn't. Yes, sir. It didn't look very good live. It good. It was well. I mean, it looked you know like nice bright blue. Yeah, but when you see the Photoshop picture, it's like it's navy blue. It's way bluer than it was in real yeah. life, dude. Like, and that's what they're selling people. Oh, look how it looked. No, that's not how it looked. Right. It looks um, like a tribe of Smurfs got smushed. Yeah, yeah it smeared under a car. Basically. <laughs> uh, the Bulls played the Knicks last night. They did. I, I was watching yeah. that game. So was, was a, I. It was a Better high score. Sweet moment. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Noah received good praise, he but did. every time Rose touched the ball, he was getting booed. They both <laughs> received um, good. I mean, Rose's well, was, was half and half mixed. for Rose. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It was yeah. it was mixed for his, and it was a homecoming. Uh, yeah. Former first round uh, draft picks, Joakim Noah. Uh, former first number one overall uh, pick, Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose, yeah. You know, they were going, and the Knicks is what kills me about it. They got up for this game. They're one and three going into Friday night's matchup, but they beat the Bulls 117 to 104. But you're right. I mean, it was mixed for uh, D Rose. They booed him when he got the ball just because when you think about it, man, for all the promise and all the accolades that he received, for not being able to uh, deliver a championship, which we all thought he couldn't get past LeBron and the Miami Heat or the Cleveland Cavaliers, man. So it's really not his fault. I mean, he's still a native son. He, he, he is I mean, a native son. He's going to go down as one. Of, he is going to go down as one of the best Chicago uh, athletes. Yes, exactly. And yeah. I'm just saying, truth be told, to me, yo, I just think the whole. The whole franchise has just been, you no. Know, they've been right. making moves. They've been making their moves. Uh, yeah. they, they brought back. They brought amazing talent this year. You know, right. you got Dwayne well, Wade. They bought Rajon Rondo. Rajon Rondo. They bought Robin Lopez. He's dropping yeah. dimes like dropping he's got. Dimes. He's, yeah, you yeah, feel me? Oh I God. mean, but uh, I just think the city got to take it as a bittersweet thing. Right. right. Now, I know. mean, right now they're in semi rebuild mode. Right now, your franchise player, yeah. um, is going to be Jimmy Butler. Exactly. And you got to have buckets. right Jimmy buckets, and still going to have a strong bench and decent coaching but I mean let's call it what it is I mean they're not gonna they're not you cannot you still have to get uh, past LeBron James in a four game and a seven game series and beat him four times yeah and, then and that's gonna be almost impossible and now the Cavaliers got a whole whole like new you know, lineup yeah, new right. lineup and guys are young new, right. too. new field they done switched right. up their whole game they, I they mean it, they're, they're a great great I mean, team yeah, guys. So, I mean, well you saw the difference I mean right. without having Kevin Love and then without having Kyrie Irving in the finals, right. Kyrie Irving just, bam, wicked three-pointer in the face of Stephen Curry, and, and they win it. And, of course, that unbelievable block by LeBron James. Yeah, right. You exactly. know, in, in the last final seconds, and, and they're champs. Exactly. I mean, and, 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 this, and the city of Cleveland deserved it, man. They're a great uh, sports team. Uh, they're a great sports city, rather. And, I mean, all, all praise to them, man. And they made it to the – personally, I can't stand the Indians. I'm a White Sox fan. They're a, a White Sox <laughs> division rival, same as the Royals. So, back-to-back um, ALCS champions, it doesn't sit well with me. Man. So, I am I was not rooting for the Indians as much I was supporting my Cubs fan friends. But you they're um, – yeah, I mean, they still got a great, great uh, team. Francona just got extended his contract, so he's going to be still the, be the skipper of that team. And, uh, you know, and – what is it? Uh, Cubs Fest. Uh, talk about how <laughs> red hot Cubs Fest is going to be in a couple months, Timmer. And oh, yeah. The, the, the preseason you, like, gathering. Right. Have, yeah. You should have uh, Barry Woods will be there. No, you should have Bartman come out and be like, ring the bell, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everything should be forgiven with Bartman. Man. Yeah. Think about it. 
Well, I don't know, man. It's uh, it wasn't his fault. Uh, yeah, it was. He reached over the wall. Oh, and, and, and <laughs> that made him lose. That made him lose being five outs from the no, World Series. No, what on. made him lose was a botched double play immediately after that. But <laughs> Alex Gonzalez didn't yeah. help. Dusty, you know Baker what? That's help. the guy. Alex Gonzalez. That's the guy. He turned into a, 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 a an agent. And he won't do any media because of that play, dude. Really? Yep. He hasn't done media in 15 years. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. He's, uh, I, I forget who he, he's uh, the agent What does he for. run? I, he's somebody on the Cubs now. Get out. Yeah, it's one of the young guys. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, Derrick Rose had his acquittal. Uh, did he now? Yeah, the, the sexual assault charges were dropped. He showed up to court and they... Dropped it. Yeah, because he was ready to go to trial with it because it's BS. And yeah, these boo boo the fool females out here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to use that one. Uh, Cutler played on Monday night. Yeah, he did. Against, yeah, he did. Uh, who was it? Dallas? The Minnesota Vikings. No, Vikings. Yeah, the, the, the division the, rival Minnesota division Vikings. Division leading rival. Division leading Minnesota yeah. Vikings. And they're in their unstoppable. No Teddy defense. Bridgewater put in Sam Bradford and with that kill defense and bam yeah but I, they, I tell you what they uh they look good they look color really look good. good yeah dude he picked them apart like he was a, he was actual field right. general no <laughs> tricks only treats yeah and, and jay color and alshon jeffrey upset the vikings on halloween night in front of several empty seats by the way guys <laughs> at soldier <laughs> field only several <laughs> yeah color connected with alshon jeffrey for three receptions for 52 yards and a touchdown which was jeffrey's first score of the season by the way and the uh, score extended the uh, Bears' lead by 17 points already. And Cutler finishing the game with 252 passing yards and a passer rating of 100.5. Not bad. Not, Not bad, bad at all. At all. Uh, I'd I'll like to it. see uh, a repeat uh, this Sunday when they take on. Oh, they're, uh, uh, they're off. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hello. Bye. Are, uh, bye, weeks. Baby, bye, 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 bye. Uh, well, <laughs> but next game after that, Cutler should come back with the same fury he had in this game. The, Prove once again that he's not a bad quarterback. He's, he's just not. got a bad team around him. That is, that's right. Uh, They're still not going to bring him back, though. All they needed is kind of a, uh, kind of a Dax Prescott just to come out of the woodwork. Man, and, and that guy him, lighten it up. And man. they would dump him like the Cowboys are going to dump Tony Romo in a heartbeat. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> Tony Romo and his trick uterus? <laughs> his trick, you're right. They don't want nothing to do with this guy. You no should more. at least stay with Carrie Underwood, man. You would have had a hot chick by your yeah. side. That's all you needed, man. That's crazy. All right, so just a couple of more things before we take our first music break here. Uh, on this day in music history. What we got? 1999, or I'm sorry, 1919, the first Dutch radio program, Soiree Musicale, with <laughs> Turn In Your Ransel. Was ah. aired on Dutch radio. Ah, danke Yeah, yeah. danke. Danke schön. Danke well. No, that's, that's German, by the oh. way. Uh, Dimitri Shastokovich can, Cantanta? About <laughs> our fatherland premiere. Cantanta means sing in Latin. Oh, okay. All right, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Masayo Oki's Symphony Atomic Bomb premieres in 1953. Alrighty. Uh, 1957, Rumpel opens at Elven Theaters. Rumpel. All right. Uh, Great Harp closes at Martin Beck Theater. Wait, this is not music. So that is music. I don't know. What, what the hell's with the theater crap then? I mean, it's live. No, it's right, live music. Back oh. then, yeah. No MP3 back then, Tim. <laughs> <Right. laughs> what you mean? Again, no 8 tracks back then. They didn't have no iPods? No. <laughs> uh, they had that one record player with the big. Yeah, the, the big speaker. That's right. right. The, what do they call it? Vitrola. Right. Vitrola. Put another nickel in, in the Nickelodeon. <laughs> in 1975, Hello Dolly opens at Minsky uh, Theater. I know that one. I know that's, that one. that's the I only one that. I, I mean, Hello I know that Dolly. One. Yeah. And then uh, finally, we go to our unofficial sponsor to the Laugh Rells radio show, HeyJackass.com. Hey. Where in uh, Nova- November to date, Total shot and killed in Chicago, 19. Total shot and wounded in Chicago for this is only for November, 77. Total shot, 96. Total homicides, 19. And uh, something like 78 to 86 percent of homicides in Chicago go unsolved. So take that and crazy. swallow it. Crazy. Very it crazy. is crazy. Yeah. All right. So you're checking out the Laugh Rails radio show here on WNUR FM, Evanston in Chicago. My name is Tim Raddich. Check your free form community DJ. I'm joined in studio with Jay Sal, the mixologist. Yes, sir. And Larry the Lyrical. Yeah. Resident happening? 
MC for the Laugh Rails Radio Show. We're about to take our first music break here, and I'm about to baffle the room with a track. What you got? We'll see if you guys know what it is. What you got? Uh, I'm not going to tell you. All right. Let's, let's get I'm it. just going to let it play. Yeah. Check it out. Ah, uh, I know these guys. WNUR. Laugh or else. Laugh or Else Radio Show has been known to play some music and say some words that could be very well interpreted as inappropriate by some of the more sensitive and younger listeners out there in Radio Land. Fortunately for LOE Radio, WNURFM finds this type of talk, ideas, and media to be artistically and culturally significant for the greater good of mankind. We are only allowed to broadcast this type of entertainment between a very specific set of hours due to the current indecency tolerance of the faculty, which is, for some arbitrary reason, 11.30pm to 6am, rather than the official guidelines drawn up by the FCC regarding safe harbor for all of radio. Hey, this is Big J. Okerson, and you're listening. It's hilarious. <laughs> hey, this is Big J. Okerson, and you're listening to Laugh or Else Radio. I don't know what the else is, but I'm looking at this guy, and it's probably involving butt stuff. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Laugh Rails Radio Show here in WNUR-FM, Evanston of Chicago. My name is Tim Aradichek, your freeform community DJ. And uh, we'll be joining you until roughly 2 a.m. this morning, which we'll happily see a second 2 a.m. this morning in about 10 minutes. Not even, in about 4 minutes. That's like some Twilight Zone stuff right there, man. So we're going to be broadcasting from the future. (laughs) (laughs) In the year 2000. Oh, man, I miss the old Conan. (laughs) I love Conan. Yeah, when he was on 5, NBC. NBC. Uh, So, uh... Yeah, we were just talking some Cubbies World Series stuff. And yes, I'm sir. joined in studio with Jay Sal, a mixologist. That's right. And Larry the Lyrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's good, Shot Town? Let him know, Larry. Let him know. What's poppin'? We are here every Saturday after 12 a.m. The big homies. You know how we do it. <laughs> What's been going on, y'all? It's been a it's been a hectic night for me. I'm running around the city. <laughs> yeah, hey, but you made it though, brother. That's all that matters. Hey. You are here. We are here. Man, man. We have we all will be gathered here. in this location. That's right. To broadcast some of this furious uh, entertainment. We're yeah. just missing the female perspective this week. Mm. Shout out to Miss Telly. She had uh, some family uh, problems, issues to resolve, but yeah. she she doing her thing. All right. That's all right. We, we understand when your bunions break out. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully she can join us next week and, and do her contributions, man. Yeah. Nice addition. Always I me personally I always love the female perspective on the show. Yeah. Miss you Telly. See you next week though. That's right. <laughs> and again, guys, I'm sorry for my delay and my tardiness. You know, as you know, Timmer and Larry, you're finding out I'm a diehard boxing fan, so I was able to take in the uh, pay-per-view uh, boxing match, Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao, Senator Manny Pacquiao. Senator. <laughs> he is a senator in the Philippines, trying to be president. Whoa. Versus uh, Jesse Vargas, man, his up and coming young champ, and it was it was a good fight. Went 12 rounds and it was action packed for sure. Was it a? Did he uh, win? Yeah, he did. Yeah. I got a little tidbit on it if I can if I can give it to y'all. Let us hear it. Let's All hear right, it. you can call it the young bull versus the fighting senator. Uh, both fighters came out and talking about Manny Pacquiao and Jesse Vargas came out swinging at the opening bell and a couple good exchanges during the FIA first round. I know there's going to be YouTube uh, video on this too, by the way. Uh, Pacquiao scored a uh, right-handed knockdown in the second round that uh, basically the whole crowd was pro Pacquiao and they got him on his feet. Uh, Pacquiao <laughs> continued to be the busier and quicker of the two, landing more punches and swelling the right eye, around the right eye of the young combatant. Uh, Vargas landed some clean shots in the 11th, but in the end, Pacquiao was too quick and too experienced for the younger champion and won by unanimous decision and is now a, another, he's got another welterweight championship. The most decorated, one of the most decorated fighters, and man, he's still, I mean, for being in his mid 30s on the wrong side of 35, and he is such a good, he's such a good warrior, man. I mean, my he's, he's, he <laughs> wrong he is. side of 35. Yeah, I mean, tell you, because I mean, it, you know, all sports, all major sports, especially combat sports, physical sports, are all, you have a short shelf life. Yeah, after Look 33. Football players, man. Yeah, they're they retire at 32. You know, you look at other, you know, other athletes and everything, especially boxers, but there's certain exceptions. You got 
Your Bernard Hopkins who's going to be fighting into his 50s. You got other guys fighting into their 40s. But if you train right and take care of yourself, which is what he's proven, you know, you can basically uh, reverse the clock. What about, uh, who was it, Herschel Walker who went and fought in the UFC? He did. So did um, our uh, radio brethren, man, our TV media brethren, Kendall Gill. Yeah. Had a couple bouts, too. I wouldn't piss K- uh, Kendall Gill off, man, at all, man. No. <laughs> I would say I love you with Illini. I love you with the Bulls, with the Nets. With the Hornets, you're my guy, man, because he sounds like he can knock somebody out, man. Meanwhile, <laughs> didn't he get into it with a uh, with a very hated and uh, controversial uh, co-host on Comcast that he got fired from the show? Wasn't that right? No, I don't. Yeah, know. that happened Who? a couple years ago. Kendall Who's Gill. That? Kendall, Kendall Gill? Gill ended up knocking out, and other people that were like, "Oh my God, I can't believe it did." Other people like, "Man, I want to knock that guy out too, man. Good for you, Kendall Gill." Was Where it? Did he knock out? Yeah, was it live on air? No, it was live on air. It was behind the behind the uh, the studio and backstage. But Maybe. yeah, he did. Uh, you got to look that up, man. Kendall Kendall Gill fight. World man. star. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they got any video or audio of it, but he he did. Um, yeah, he had he had a physical altercation with a co-host and I'm just a guy just, you know, you, you, you say certain things and you have a certain limit and you can't know more and bam, you know, you got to catch some hands, boy. Yeah. Catch, catch them catch hands. hands. That is crazy. I'm telling you, man. Hey, but yeah, another good fight. And uh, yeah, you know, I always have the boxing beat for you, gentlemen. Oh, thank you for that And for our listeners of course Yeah Always gotta have that and So I guess it's time We move on to some Chicago news Yes have it. Uh, There's a little bit of stuff I gathered earlier today uh, The computer glitch Gums up the sale of city stickers in Chicago I don't know if you guys have experienced uh, What it means to live in Chicago But <laughs> Every year, you gotta buy two stickers that cost like almost 250 bucks to put one on your your license plate, one on your window, just to prove that you're legit and you could park in the city. Uh, Some people had a problem buying the city vehicle stickers in Chicago on Monday afternoon after a computer glitch caused a brief outage. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I'm sure it was a glitch. Sure it was. (laughs) Right. We had some sporadic outages between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m., office spokesman Patrick Concord said. Slower transaction times were reported as well. Uh, The problem affected not only the clerk's office at City Hall, but also approximately 450 currency exchanges in the city. Uh, That's a ridiculous amount of problems to have. That is. Very much so. In a two-hour span. Yeah. you know, I work in a, in a, like grocery and hospitality on the first. All of the state's wick stuff went down for like six hours. <laughs> oh, I'm wow. like, you guys couldn't pick a better day than the first to go down. <laughs> it's the first of the month. I'm standing. Wake up, wake I, up. I'm in Highland Park. I'm in a. I'm in a store, man. And these people are getting rowdy. Like, what do you mean it's not working? I'm like, I can't do nothing. It's, it's a state <laughs> problem. <laughs> Blame your damn congressman. Right. Jesus. Uh, they, you were. You were. The, you were there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, you fix it. Technician man. Uh, there are between 80,000 and 120,000 stickers ranging in price from 90 to $200 that will expire at the end of the day on Monday. Good Crazy. lord. Yeah, and then they, they all go to the DMV because you can't, like, older cars, you got to get them tested before you right. can get your plate stickers. Right. That's and you get, them, you get them tested every year, but newer cars, you do it every two years. So everybody driving an 85 Ford Taurus, man. Right. <laughs> my heart goes out to you. Yeah, hey, and my so, prayers go out to you, too. That thing, damn thing's still running. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I know my 02, man, car, my Chevy Impala, is to, I have to wait two years, but I have to get it. Uh, hopefully, I'll have a new vehicle by then, but I'll be able to uh, upgrade it. So, so I'm like cruising down the street in my 02. <laughs> <laughs> So motorists do not have to pay late fees unless they wait until November 30th to buy their stickers. But please right. can ticket your vehicle of with an expired they can. ticket. Of course So they I can. guess it's true what Chance the Rapper says. You know, it's easier to get a gun than it is a parking spot in the city. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, the city's working hard to find out what caused the problem. I think it's Russian hackers. I think so, too. Uh, <laughs> which also affected some other city departments, including the Department of Finance. Yeah, but, you know, the Department of Finance wasn't affected in any negative ways. Right. Just the people who need to get money. Or right, right. <laughs> right. The same people stickers. that the potholes that have caused major frontal damage 
and they take forever to pay you, but when it's time to get their money, they want their money. Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> of course crazy. they do. That's how it works. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but a Strange Foods Festival is coming to Chicago. A what? Strange Foods. Foods like strange music. You hold know? up, oh, hold up, hold up! Don't tell me that these people are coming from out of town, out of, out of the state, with road chocolate covered roaches. Probably, <laughs> yeah. They, there was a whole thing on WGN like Wednesday Ew. about all the foods you can eat. <laughs> I don't remember specifically, but there's a little bit of an article Egg here. Egg-foo feline. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Egg-foo cat. Mm, good. Uh, if you've been thinking about traveling around the globe. That's just- not the kitty that I prefer to eat, but that's another story. <laughs> oh. You're listening to late night radio. That's right. And, and thank God you are. And this is not whispers in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> but I will whisper in the dark if you'd like. <laughs> so if you've been thinking about traveling around the globe just to see the world's best sculptures, objects, functional art, and design, you no longer have to. This November, the world's foremost sculptures, objects, functional art, and design fair, SOFA, SOFA for short, is back and happening right here in the great city of Chicago at Navy Pier, November's 7th through 9th. So for Chicago is one of the longest running art fairs in the world and the oldest art fair in Chicago now in its 21st year. So for Chicago is dedicated to bringing together the perpetually separated spheres of design, decorative arts and fine arts. With nearly 70 international renowned galleries, Sofa Chicago will be exhibiting an array of ceramics, wood, glass, fiber, jewelry, metal, and innovative designs. Additionally, those who purchase tickets to Sofa Chicago will have the chance to meet hundreds of the world's most creative people, as well as buy works of some of the globe's most talented emerging artists. And wait, it doesn't stop there. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> this year's so for Chicago hopes to take art lovers one step further. Explore the world of art like never before when you purchase a general admission ticket and receive access to not only the fair, but, <laughs> but also a sofa lecture series presented by some of the world's most distinguished artists, collectors, and professionals, as well as a special event series curated and presented to put some periods in his damn statement. <laughs> we know it's a lot to handle this year, organized, blah, blah, blah. But what I was reading something about the food, like the whole, oh, here it is, eat. The whole experience that you want to go there for is about the food. Now, if they got some alligator, I wouldn't mind that. I like some alligator. Oh, you can alligator. get that at the Taste of Chicago. Alligator, ostrich, I ostrich. had snake. I've never had ostrich or a snake. They tried to give me a box of fried worms. I was like, you can take this back where you found it. <laughs> 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 Throw that stuff on a hook and drop it in the water and catch some fish. Hold on, hold on. Right, right. Hold on. There's nothing wrong with the worm, especially when it's in the tequila. Oh, That's man. right. That's about the only time when it's disinfected. It's about the only time. It's a probiotic. <laughs> Probiotic. That's about the only time. <laughs> yeah, that clean you out real nice. Yeah, right, damn right it will. Does it, Those does, crafty Mexicans is of it mine. Is true what they say? It gives you hallucinations. What's that? The worm and the tequila. I don't know about that. I uh, <laughs> no, I, but it makes your if it makes your unattractive date better looking, then hey, that's all it needs. All you need right there, man. Turns a two into a ten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Chicago Strange Food Festival happening Sunday, November 9th. Chicago's first festival celebrating these strange things. On menus around the Windy City, guests will have the chance to sample out of the ordinary fare from the over a dozen small local restaurants while sipping drinks provided by local breweries and distillers. And it's only one day, Wednesday, November 9th, correct? This is Sunday. Uh, no, that would be Wednesday if it's this year. It's Sunday, November 6th. Well, that's today. Yeah. Right. That's, that's today. Well, you said November 9th. I'm just well, correcting I'm you, sir. I'm sorry, J. Sal. Well, you should be. Uh, where was I? Rotating ethnic dance troops hey, hey. will keep the energy high and other entertainment will be added as the day gets closer. Uh, no tickets will not be available at the door. What? You're going to go to this sh- festival. You're going to have to uh, pre-purchase your tickets online. All right. And they are roughly... 
Mm, Forty to fifty-five dollars a ticket. Good lord! Eat some strange food. <laughs> I'll just go to my sister's house and let her see what she whips up. How much for just mm-hmm. one rib? That's right. That, mm-hmm. I show is hungry. In the kitchen, huh? <laughs> so with this strange food, you pray after you eat, then, right? Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know about you, but I After will not. After dinner, Grace. <laughs> I will not be attending the Strange Food Festival. Me neither. Unless somebody offers me a ticket and drives there and pays for my food. <laughs> <laughs> and your stomach pump and your antacid afterwards. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of Chance the Rapper. Yes. Chance the Rapper will host a free Chicago concert to encourage youth voters. Okay. Uh, election day is November 8th And it creeps closer and closer Several artists have used the short window of time Wisely by hosting free concerts In either uh, Support of their candidate of choice Or to call attention To the importance of voting So sure. far hey, wait, hey, the streets are speaking Hey, the artists are speaking That's what's up Get out, like here, it, and vote. Yeah, get out here and vote people Positive stories in the media Chicago, regarding hip-hop artists. Especially Absolutely. Chicago. Chicago people. Chicago people. Well. Everything. Every. I don't care. Let me, let, let me <laughs> tell you about who's on this list of All big right. names that draw, such as the National. I don't know who that is. Katy Perry. <laughs> Miley Citrus. Cyrus. <laughs> Miley Citrus. Uh, John Bon Jovi. And Steve Aoki. Aoki. Steve Aoki. Uh, Aoki and Jay Z and Neo have played shows or will play shows uh, or have appeared at events in support of the Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Now, Chance the Rapper, who openly shared his support for Hillary Clinton in a Billboard cover story, boo, is doing <laughs> his part in throwing a free concert of his own next week in his hometown, Chicago, on Monday, November the 7th. Nice. Uh, this election is very important, a chance for new leaders and new opportunities to emerge. Unless it's Hillary, then it's the same old, same old. <laughs> uh, chance said in a press release, he also expressed his pride in partnering with so many great organizations such as Boost Your Voice and Turbo Vote to give everyone a voice in the democratic process and encourage people to vote both locally and nationally. That's what it is. Uh, there's some sort of clip here. It appears to be like a PSA. Why did it start out with the Sour Patch Kid? <laughs> what is okay, it? so the reason why I'm, you know, talking as I'm stirring yeah, is uh, mad, I'm making right? a gumbo for the guys tonight. I think so. Mao Five Trap. Oh, Mouse Trap. Ah, oh, I see your hipster BS text. <laughs> yeah. What is this? It's not unrelated nonsense. Millennials. <laughs> Nerds. Yeah. Abortions that lived, you mean. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Private, uh, the best part of you ran down the, the, uh, the big homie. <laughs> and ended up as a brown stain on the mattress. <laughs> <laughs> Only two things from Texas, boy. Steers and queer. You don't like a steer, you gotta be a queer. That's right. Uh, we're going to have to change the gears on the news story here because it's about to get a little dark. Oh. Uh, according to BET Plus, look what drove this Chicago dad to violently kill his three year old son on Halloween. Mm. What the? This 22 year old douchebag, uh, father, former father, was arrested after fatally beating his son and abusing his pregnant fiance on Halloween, reported by the Chicago. Tribune. Uh, on, mo- on Monday, Devon Thomas, pictured above, punched a three year old Tavian J. Thomas mm. in the stomach and chest and threw Tavian's mother, who was eight months pregnant, into a wall so hard that she prematurely went into labor. Damn. Oh my God. This guy sounds like a real winner. <laughs> uh, Tavian's mother identif- uh, uh, mother's identity has not been revealed. On Sunday night, Thomas punched Tavian in the stomach several times, which resulted in a child vomiting, uh, reported the Chicago Sun Times. When Tavian's mother tried to stop Devon, he choked her until she went unconscious, said Groshans later on. The mother gave the child medicine for his upset stomach when he really needed an operation to patch up his internals. Uh, according to prosecutors, the next day Devon continued to punch and stomp on Tavian. 
Uh, Dude is going to get. He's not going to be treated well at all when he, when he, when he yeah. finds his uh, cellmates. <laughs> yeah. uh, when the mother tried to intervene once again, Devon slapped her so hard she hit the wall and fell to the floor. He then dragged her by the hair into another room where he engaged in an argument with her. Uh, by the time Tavion's mother went back to check on him, he was lying face down and unresponsive. Horrible. Prosecutor said, "Horrible. Man, how could you do this to a kid that right, can't even man. defend himself, Yo. man? I don't care how much candy he ate when you told him not to. Yeah, man. That's ridiculous." Ta- Devon then called nine one one. Tavian's mother began doing a cardiopulmonary resuscitation Yo. and chest compression. As paramedics made their way to the couple's residence, Thomas took over doing chest compressions. Tavian was later transported to Roseland, where he, where was, he was pronounced dead. That is crazy. That's horrible, uh, man. Uh, Yo, There's a special yeah. place in uh, hell there for that gentleman. For real. Yeah, it's Yo, the ladies. room with the furnace. Basically. The real talk, ladies. It's like, you Y'all call it hell, I call it Hades. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Y'all got to be chill on who you guys consider to be your significant other. <laughs> Absolutely, you do. Guys mm-hmm. and girls. Yeah, but, you know, how do you, how, do you, how do you spot out a sociopath in, you know, like a week? or two you, you can't no you can't you can't no, no. that you kind of stuff you know someone yeah but that kind of stuff surfaces after like a year at right? least you're right yeah. you gotta still pay attention yeah I mean, hey he may hey he or she may be good in doing whatever they do in the sack right you know what I mean? <laughs> but hey your integrity is worth more. yeah just uh i don't know get a get a litmus test or something yeah mm-hmm. you feel me uh, Thomas was then arrested and admitted to detectives that he punched Tavian in the chest four times and kicked him once in the stomach. Man, Dude. they, they should have beat him on the spot. Basically. Beat him down. <laughs> yeah. The Cook County Medical Examiner's Office determined Tavian died from multiple injuries of child abuse his death was ruled a homicide of course yeah dude need to yeah and yeah there, beat that guy down psycho, man he looks psycho anyway yeah right right there is a short clip here let's have a listen to what the article says we have de-emphasized arrests and citations and field interviews um i i don't even look at those numbers the only numbers that i look at are crime numbers Nah, it's some unrelated. It's nothing to do with the story. No, that's some crazy stuff. Man, but that's yeah. Like he's not. He's gonna get a nice welcoming reception in jail. Man, I would have put him. They don't. Uh, they don't. They don't take kindly to to kid right. touchers yeah. or beaters. Hopefully they stick him in federally pound me in, pound him in the ass prison. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> right, man. Like for real. Uh, widen it. <laughs> widen his sphincter. That's right. <laughs> He might have gone in a tight end, but he's coming out a wide receiver. Yeah. He's going to have a lot of bullies in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. That is uh, sad. Yeah. But moving, yeah. Let, let's not bring down. I don't know, so, man. Yeah. Bring down that. Let's, uh, let's, let's try and hype this back up a little bit. Well, Just a little bit. Just uh, a little bit. No more stories about murder from here out, but <laughs> an Indiana man has been convicted of posing as a psychiatrist in Chicago. <laughs> hey. Oh. He getting money. Yeah, <laughs> I would I would have been like a couples therapy guy. Yeah. Right, and be like, listen, I want I want you guys separate, and she's gonna come in first. You I mean you're not hey. posing as a gynecologist anymore, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had that on lockdown, homie. Yeah, silly. no, I got I got sued for malpractice. <laughs> you're like, miss, you didn't come in for your mammogram. You're I'm not even here. a patient. It's okay, I'll take you anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, you can't solicit gynecology patients on the street. Right. You doing that at the Cubs rally? Oh, everybody looks good from here. <laughs> everybody looks good from here, young lady. Listen, you look a kind of you're looking kind of lumpy in the front of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is nice and tight and clean. Do you live alone, Tony? Yeah. Uh, according to the AP, a 37-year-old Indiana man accused by authorities of posing as a psychi- psychiatrist at a Chicago clinic and prescribing drugs to a nine-year-old child and others. Has been convicted by a federal jury see, on a seventeen-year-old. See, people are stupid. They put themselves. Thirty-seven. Themse- Thirty-seven. Are, first of all, if you're gonna do a hustle, make sure you're not gonna do it to the point where you're gonna get caught or something. 
<laughs> like, if you need a certification or a license for yeah. that hustle, like, yeah. it's probably a good idea you go to get, get it. Get right. It. Yeah. Now, if you just want to, you know, do some, I would probably, I would, that's not a good hustle. I would probably do what every psychologist does for a couple therapy. Where did they find this dude on right. Craigslist? <laughs> probably. <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> yeah, hi, Dr. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott Redman of Hammond was found guilty Thursday on three counts of wire fraud on one count of aggravated identity theft and one count of furnishing false information to the Drug Enforcement Administration and five counts of distributing a controlled substance. Yo. How the hell do you give out prescriptions when you're not a doctor? <laughs> What, what kind of insignia? Don't yeah, you, like you need a notepad. Yeah. You, need a, you need a doctor's notepad. Like, w- unless he beat up a doctor, <laughs> like rolled him in the parking lot on his way in, took his briefcase. Right. Uh, federal prosecutors say Redman, not to be confused with Redman. Red man. Not right. Red man from <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, assumed the identity of an Illinois physician to see patients and prescribe medications to more than 40 individuals from September 2015 until this past February. So for a whole year, this mo- this man been moving. He been making moves. Uh, all kind of people, yeah. Yo, did they freeze his ass? <laughs> <laughs> Red man faces up to 166 years in prison when he is sentenced on Yay. February 8th. I hope he gets the the max, man. Yeah, that's you know. some bull. You gonna what how you gonna this? pretend to be a psychiatrist and then like, oh, I think you need some Ritalin. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. What is wrong with y'all people? Maybe he, <laughs> maybe he did fix some some of them patients. You know, like who knows? Or made a few of them more crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those are the ones that turn out to be like the Columbine kids. Yeah. And yo, but. Hey, these parents who are screwed up, where do you get this guy from? <laughs> like, do you not check his background or are you just going to a Yeah, right. Bible? I don't want, I want to know. Like, he says he was the best available psychiatrist on Groupon. <laughs> yeah, I had a Groupon. To go. I had a did Groupon you, to fix my life. Did you hear that from the lady or the person he was banging at the time? I was yeah. like, what the freak? <laughs> She's like picking up people in the bar. Hey, do you need a psychiatrist? Hey, That's exactly. right. <laughs> oh, lady, I'm drinking my therapy away. Uh, so another lawsuit challenges Chicago's red light cameras ordinance. Good, 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 good. Uh, but they're gonna fail miserably, Jay. Because, oh no! Uh, you know, Chicago ain't got no budget. They trying to get everything. Of course yeah. <laughs> and it's not only that; these cameras have been illegal. I mean, it's t- right. If they, if you if you aren't being pursued actively by live police officers, then what you're doing is not a crime. <laughs> right. Uh, a move by Mayor Rahm Emanuel to allow this clown for the rehearing of as many as 1.5 million improperly issued automated red light and speeding tickets faces a new court challenge filed on Tuesday. Attorney J.C. Zolna filed a 72-page law- lawsuit challenging an ordinance passed in September that allowed the city to send new notices to motorists for red light tickets issued between 2010 and 2015, giving them a chance to contest the ticket in court. I contested one during that time, and I got it right back like a day later. They're like, right. you better pay this. You need to pay this, man. Yeah, otherwise we're going to take your license and then impound your ride. Or boot your car, which I was unfortunately on the... Uh Bad side of that, waking up to that, that Man, totally right. sucks. Recently, that sucks. Uh, last summer, yeah, uh, leaving a friend's house, and sure enough, I come out of my car, and there's a boot on it, and it <laughs> took all day. I messed up my whole day, canceled my plans. Yeah, because I had to wait the, for them. Yeah. Well, how about walking out of club? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Girls looking at you. Hey, that ain't my car. <laughs> oh boy! Man, I walked, I walked the whole block. block before I came back. <laughs> oh, no. That ain't my car, <laughs> man. Somebody stole my ride. I don't know where the hell it is. And you're like, wow. The girl's like, wow. You're taking it actually pretty calm there for having your ride stolen. Yeah, you feel me. <laughs> uh, but Zolna said the ordinance was just an attempt to get around the le- illegality of the tickets. After judge in another lawsuit he filed determined the city failed to follow proper procedures and had essentially tossed the tickets out. Mm. City Hall wants a do-over on tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of tickets, Zolna said. Unfortunately, nothing in Illinois' uh, law says that 
if you lose the first time around, you can adopt a new ordinance to let you get back and fix it. <laughs> it's really a scam. <laughs> it is. In scam. September, the Emanuel administration had pushed through an ordinance giving ticketed motorists a second chance to challenge the tickets issued between March 2010 and May 2015. The ordinance followed a court ruling in another Zolnik lawsuit that essentially tossed the tickets out because the city was giving people 22 days to challenge the violation instead of the required 25 days. And City Hall was failing to send out the required second notices to those who did not respond. It's crazy. So they're like, here, you got 22 days to pay it when really you've got 25. And if you exceed that first notice you're not going to get the second notice and then you, all of a sudden you, you don't even know what the hell you got to pay and buy when so it, <laughs> like they said it is a scam tuesday's lawsuit says the city's retroactive maneuvers to save ticket revenue is improperly collected and illegal in a written statement the Emanuel administration called zona's latest legal attack baseless because that's what a crook in cook county would say yep uh, since most of the ticket holders were guilty of committing violation. Yeah, what? <laughs> Did you, you rolled through a red light? Oh, my God. Forgive me. Hang them. Hang them up to dry. Oh, I made a right turn when the light was red and there was no traffic? Oh, man, sue me. They want everything. <laughs> you know what? There was once I was at a DMV. I got booted like Jay did, and uh, it was for multiple cars I had at the time. So mm. I had, like, three license plates with over 500 apiece Yo. on them. And when I got there, the lady's like, uh, yeah, it's like 1700 something. And then she's like, sir, the city wants their money and they're going to get it. And I'm like, well, yeah, I need to drive. You <laughs> I need bitch. to drive to get the money. <laughs> All right, I need to drive to get the money. So what yeah, do you, what yeah. you need me to do? <laughs> uh, in closing, Zolna suits are the latest following a Tribune investigation of corruption and mismanagement within the city's $600 million red light program. The series exposed a $2 million city hall bribery scheme that brought the traffic cameras to Chicago as well as tens of thousands of tickets that were issued to drivers unfairly. I don't and understand that's, this. That's the thing is like you can't you can't fight, you can't it's like it's no, all they have. They it. just want right. you to be broke. This, that's it. It's you know, it's <laughs> like they say, teach him pay a you know, give a man a fish, leave for a day. Right. Teach a man to fish, he'll have to go get a license and <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you can only fish during a certain time of the year. You, you want you guys want to hear something messed up? My father and I um have the same legal name. So when that happened with the booting, um he I had no. He had tickets that my sister, my younger si- sibling, had incurred. That the car was under his name. So basically, I was paying for those tickets. They get associated with me because he's not senior and I'm not junior. Any oh, one of our official documents. Right. So they're like, oh, same name. Oh, it's got to be you. But wait, what cars were these? I don't remember ever having these high violations. This car and this car. Those weren't even mine. Those were my dad's. Well, can you have him come in here? I'm like, are you serious? Like you got a. 60, he's in another country. He's got a, like a '68 Cutlass on there. Like yeah. I don't. Man, I ain't even that old. Right? That's and he's like, crazy. cataract? Hey, cataracts, man, I have my eyes, man. What's the only cataract I know? <laughs> so I was like, no, man. He's like, you got to bring him in here. I'm like, oh, God, man. Really? I'm like, you guys are impossible. It's crazy, man. They just, right. they just, I don't understand that. What, what, what's the point of all this? Yeah. So we're going to take our final music break. And then on the other side, we come back. We got a few funny stories. And then we'll call it a day. Uh, this is the Laugh Rails Radio Show and WNUR-FM's free-form programming, which happens overnight all week long from midnight on to about 6 a.m. Uh, I'm joined in studio with the resident mixologist, Jay Cell. As That's right, well we're here. As the resident MC, Larry the Lyrical, Lot of Late. Yeah, yeah, we out here. That's how we do it, babe. That's how Shout we do time. it every week at... On Saturday nights at midnight to 2 a.m. Uh, I don't know what's queued up for this track, so we're just going to let it rip. Oh, yeah. You know, it's my favorite. Tupac, right here. go wrong. WNUR FM. Stay tuned. And I'm a heavyweight champion. I'm a little nigga. That's why it's so raw to watch me just battle lions, because I'm a little skinny nigga battling niggas three times my size. My size. Hey, this is Ron Funch and you're li- <laughs> No, that's not my name. Use this whole thing. <laughs> this is Ron Funches and you're listening to Laughs or Else. I don't know what the R else is. I assume it's like crying. <laughs> 
Laugh or else radio show has been known to play some music and say some words that could be very well interpreted as inappropriate by some of the more sensitive and younger listeners out there in Radio Land. Fortunately for LOE Radio, WNURFM finds this type of talk, ideas, and media to be artistically and culturally significant for the greater good of mankind. We are only allowed to broadcast this type of entertainment between a very specific set of hours due to the current indecency tolerance of the faculty, which is, for some arbitrary reason, 11.30pm to 6am, rather than the official guidelines drawn up by the FCC regarding safe harbor for all of radio. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the Ten Crack Commandments. Right. Welcome back. Flavrell's radio show. Yeah. WNURFM, Evanston in Chicago. We are rounding the bend into that final turn. And uh, we're just going to chill it out a little bit here at the end. Uh, Larry. Has, Larry. Uh, you were just telling me in the break that you were uh, you got some more shows lined up. You got uh, a couple uh, other gigs that you're working on during the week. Yes, Shaw Town. It is real in these streets. We are hustling every week. It is Let It Play week every week. Hashtag starting, Let It Play. Hashtag Let It Play starting on Mondays. Mondays we are at Red Line Tap every Monday at uh, Rogers Park off of Glenwood. And then uh, after hours at Quenchers. Then you got Wednesdays. We are at, at Elbow Room. And then after that, after hours at North Bar with your big homies Tony Bangs and Dirty MF. And then we got it rocking every Thursday night at Chucky's, also in Rogers Park. We poppin'. Got Latin Night on Thursdays featuring yours truly, Larry the Lyrical. And then uh, the big homie, Tim the Lover, Tim Francis the Lover, which you heard a track from him a little earlier called Saved. Uh, check him out. He's on SoundCloud, Tim Francis the Lover. And uh, I actually have a special guest here with me right now. It's, it's my homie, my road dog, one time for the one time. Y'all say hello, shout town to Julio. What's going on, man? From Venezuela here, trying to put some music around, trying to bring some vibes to the neighborhood. And we're going to be there every Thursday at Chucky, so I hope to see you around. Yeah, yeah. So every Thursday, what time should they they be lining up? Again? Man, nine until. We're going to yeah. keep it popping. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Uh, Julio, you, you're also uh, snapping some photos while you were here, man. It, do you work on some some photography as well? Yeah, I'm 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 basically doing videos for for every artist that come with us to 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 bring some good music. We're, I mean, we, we came this far to 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 bring some art, to bring some good music, also videos and photos, and, yeah. supporting art. You feel me? Like like everything related to art and, and good vibes. We are gonna be there doing it. Where can uh, people check you out or some of your uh, some of your work? They can they can go to Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Uh, my my name is is Th- Sadis Theorem. Uh, uh, it's uh, some kind of deep meaning related to art and stuff. <laughs> I've been I've been having this conversation for a while. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, Julio Ferrer is my name and last name. They they can follow me on Instagram and Facebook too. So so. W- Popping. Yeah. How's the Instagram? Do you, are you like every day, every other day? Like, do you yeah, post yeah. pictures? Yeah, every day, every day posting new pictures, new videos. Uh, and we, we, we're we going to take over. We're going to do it. Me? Yeah. 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 You can also check it out if you want some more stuff too. You can also check uh, out on my page too. You get to get to Julio's page, uh, just type in or hashtag Let It Play, or uh, just type in Larry the Lyrical. Me and Julio always connect. I always got some streaming from him. That's the big homie right there. Right on, man. Glad to have you here, Julio. And anytime uh, you can make it out, you're more than welcome to come back. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Thank uh you. yeah as uh as we I need another Latino to balance out the staff here, man. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? The, the Puerto Rican <laughs> right. isn't a Latin, yeah, yeah, Latin enough good. for you? Uh, who's Puerto Rican here? I'm Mexican, he's Venezuelan, Telly, man. Yeah. Telly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we miss Telly. Don't worry about it. She'll oh be there, yeah, so. yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, we miss her yeah, and her blade. She would be right. Yeah. That's right. Of course we miss the female perspective. I'm sorry. Yeah. She, she ain't <laughs> spilling no blood tonight, so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. you know, she always keep the switchy on us. <laughs> yeah, I know she'll cut her brother, man. I know right. girls like that, man. Oh, shizzy. Man, oh. What about you, J-Cell? What's, what's, going, what's on? going on in your, your world? 
Nothing, brother. Same thing. Glad to be with you guys here, man. Another uh, blessed with a beautiful fall day. Uh, a lot going on, like I said, with the Cubs, with the politics and everything. So it's nice to come down and have this forum to express and just give our opinions and do it in a nice, professional, yet fun way, man. But, any, uh, yeah, me. Are, there, are there any fights coming up you're looking forward to? Oh, my God. This month is going to be crazy popping off with some professional boxing bouts. After we saw this tonight, the uh, Pacquiao-Vargas uh, fight, we're going to have the big one, which is going to have SOG Andre Ward, who uh, you know him from being probably ranked number two pound for pound best fighter. He made a cameo in the movie Creed that's starring Sylvester Stallone and Michael uh, B. Jordan. Yeah. And um, he is a great, great fighter. Uh, he's going to be fighting the European machine that is Sergey Kovalev. It's going to be a light heavyweight fight. It's going to be a beautiful slobber knocker of a fight slobber knocker <laughs> yes sir it's gonna be a great great fight um that's going on and other than that man just keeping it down with sports man more and more stuff to come of course yeah cool. that's how we do it <laughs> yeah oh oh wait <laughs> sidebar real quick too tim uh-huh yo there is a show if you haven't checked out zany's please check out zany you should go to the website zany's rosemont uh zany's comedy club there's three locations st charles uh, the original one, uh, Old Town, Chicago, Downtown, and then Rosemont. I will be performing, uh, closing out a Tuesday 10 at Rosemont on the 15th of November. So if you guys want to come out, get a good few laughs, and then end your night with a good musical ballad. Nice. That's yay, yay. What night is that again? Uh, 15th, November 15th. That's a Tuesday? Yes, sir. Yeah. Beautiful. Most excellent. And uh, make sure you check it out. Get your tickets now. Uh, where, where can they go to get tickets, Lair? Oh, oh. Uh, if you down with the We'll Let It Play week, uh, you can come to any of those events that I got going on. Uh, Red Line Tap Quenches. If you catch me there, holla at me. I got you. Uh, Red Line or uh, Elbow Room and North Bar. Holla at me. I got you. Chucky's. Holla at me. I got you. And uh, I'm also throwing on another show just to end the week on a Sunday. Uh, you can catch me at Gallery Cabaret. So if you catch me out there, that's how we do. It. That's how we do every week in Chi Town. Or you can also call in. You know, first couple of callers might get a ticket or two. Might get a ticket. Or too just holla at us this is the big homie wnur do it right now 847 866 9687 tell larry you want to go check him out um i got a couple of stories here that we didn't get got? to uh man one of them's kind of <laughs> <laughs> kind of messed up i say kind of but it's completely messed up what's happening a daycare center uh, launched a Freddy Krueger prank on some of their kids. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> and uh, That is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and the video has gone a little bit viral as and these people have come under a little bit of screw. Wait, 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 wait. Like, just, you are all my children. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately uh, for us. Uh, these are some new, new millennials. Yeah, they right, get, right. They can't handle it. They can't fathom it. They can't. They can't. They can't. Fortunately they for us, there is video. And we're going to play that for you right <laughs> now. This is <laughs> Lord. hilarious. <laughs> Why would you do that? I shouldn't be laughing at this. This is kids. hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why would you do that, dude? <laughs> Listen to these poor kids, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. This is crazy. I am oh, dying. this is bad, man. <laughs> this is bad. Oh my god. <laughs> Come here, my little piglet. Uh, like five of them kids should be track oh stars. Oh lord. <laughs> yeah, they were running. Right <laughs> Man, that's bogus, dude. I like, think I just seen one climb up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh lord. You got I got Is that going to be on our website? Yeah, oh. I'll post it. Up. I, I got to see that again. In the, in the, oh, oh, my God. After a couple uh. of cocktails, I'll laugh myself silly. <laughs> I, got, I got two other quick stories All here right. that we can talk about before we end here. Um, this one happened earlier this week. A woman Farts. farted during <laughs> surgery. Carry some rip. And uh, apparently, the gas. <laughs> from, the gas. 
<laughs> the gas was combustible enough to ignite yeah. under the laser while she was having surgery, and it oh. burnt up her nether, nether regions. Oh, Lord. It was oh. it was Mexican taco night there at the hospital uh, <laughs> kitchen there, obviously. So, this yeah. is why they tell you not to eat before surgery. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly why, dude. It was just um, chilies from Wendy's. What's the problem? Oh, man. That is like the most offensive thing to your butt. Right. Uh, <laughs> A woman went into a Tokyo hospital for surgery and needed to be treated for burns after one of her farts apparently started a fire in the operating room. That's shiitake. Yeah. <laughs> them shiitake mushrooms. I'm telling you. Explosive. <laughs> West Coast. Uh, the fire happened April 15th at a Tokyo Medical University hospital when a doctor was using a laser on her cervix. Uh, of a woman in her 30s, according to the Asahi Shimbun paper. Uh, doctors believe the patient passed gas, and then it was ignited. <laughs> <laughs> it was ignited by the laser. Uh, the resulting fire burned most of the patient's body, waist, and legs. Dang. Uh, according to news.com.au. And I thought I had killer gas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is assault gas. Yep. Uh, according to a report about the incident, no flammable materials were used in the operating room during the surgery and equipment it was functioning normally. According to the report, when the patient's intestinal gas leaked into the space of the operation room, it ignited with the irradiation <laughs> of the laser what and a burning sp- <laughs> <laughs> and the burning spread eventually reaching the surgical drape and causing the fire. Wow. So this turned out to be like a, a five three. Mm-hmm. It was like a three stooges event in the operating right. room. A five alarm fire f- <laughs> <a> fart. <laughs> <laughs> I perform a lot of collect colorectal and anal surgeries and this has never happened. It would like it would take more than the usual amount of methane in the cold and to cause such severe injury. She was gassy. (laughs) (laughs) Zade said the methane gas that is released during a fart could be ignited with heat sources such as laser or an electrocoagulation are used in the vicinity. (laughs) Coagulation Um, is right. (laughs) Yeah, We went from gassy to classy. (laughs) All instances that I've heard have involved cases of bowel obstruction where there's a buildup of methane gas, but I doubt this was the only factor in her story. Uh, she had tacos. Had some. <laughs> There's a little bit of a clip here. Risks. Let's hear what it a says. A female patient in Japan is said to have experienced this to an extreme degree when she farted during a procedure, <laughs> causing the fire to erupt and burn parts of her lower body. The Asahi Shimbun is reporting that the accident occurred on April 15th when a woman in her 30s was having her cervix operated on with a laser at Tokyo Medical University Hospital. The news outlet quotes an external review committee's recently released report as concluding that when the patient's intestinal gas leaked into the space of the operation room, it ignited with the irradiation of the laser and the burning spread, eventually reaching the surgical drape and causing the fire. The group could not otherwise find flammable items in the operating room or problems with the equipment. The patient reportedly suffered serious burns along her waist and legs. I bet you some of those doctors were like, It's Gazira! Run for your life! She got fire crotch. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, Uh, there's one more story I want to cover before uh, we How can we cover the kids screaming at Freddy Krueger and the farting, you know, operating... (laughs) These these will be attached to video. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Finally, a man steals a police car and live streams it on Facebook. There you go! And we'll go to the Sticking video. it to the man. Woo. Okay. I'm a motherfucking retard. Yeah, he is. That's what I am. He has to be. I'm, I'm sorry. What's but he on? He's white. <laughs> this is the shit I want to go out to. He, they got radios in their car? Yeah, they got everything, dude. Love y'all. I love me. I love you. Like, I got He's on something. Do. He's got to be. Only in America. <laughs> Only in America. <laughs> Only in small town America you could do this. Try to try. You up your feet tonight. He's singing yeah. in the car. What is I'm going to get my phone in this new glove box. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> but, uh. I got friends in low places. Yeah. 
<laughs> He's doing shout outs. This is going to be the end of your damn life. And right you want to go out to this Listen, garbage? Like, I'm country, jazz, hip hop, rap, fucking folk singer. You listening to Johnny shit. Gill, bro. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, man. There's so much fucking music that I love. Man, I got a little country. But you playing fucking the wrong stuff. Shit. <laughs> uh. I ain't got my fucking red cowboy you know what? It'd be great if you drop some bars right now. But, um, some whack ass look, material. <clears throat> some Bubba Sparks or something. Hey, I actually, actually brought the fucking hard on that motherfucker. But um, it may not mean nothing to y'all. It don't. But <laughs> all I can say is like. And Dre, you playing like this? Like, right. oh my god! How is he doing this? Country's like country's more like single hits and stuff. Happy baby was. Oh, we skip ahead now. Okay, if you don't believe me right now, look, check it out. From Tulsa to Wasso right now, I'm in the cop car. Um, where's my sirens at? Yeah, where are you signing? Oh, you hear my sirens? Look, check it out. He's doing a goofy. <laughs> you don't fucking believe me? Hey, I lost a job for throwing right the sirens now, in the I'm cop car one. Yeah, the boy. Like, this, what, this, this shit I'm gonna go out to right here. Hey, Driving oncoming right. traffic. It's, it is, Do it. it is, man. I can't. I can't help it. I ain't no hillbilly. It's hill William to you, sir. Yeah. I'm just gonna do what I gotta do. And uh, shit. Yeah, he gonna do what he gotta do, guys. Not a long fucking time on that. But anyways, what's he gotta do in oh, country town USA? This, this is my last video, for sure, probably. Let that be me. It would have um, been my last video. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where the fuck I'm going, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Why? This is such a dumbass yeah, idea. <laughs> Why would you do it? You ain't I even got a plan. You're just going to jump in a car and go? Right. right. So we can How did they even let that... Oh. It said uh, uh, the cop left it. He went in the store and left the car running. Right, well, somebody's getting fired. Peoria? Peoria? Are you kidding? Cops don't get fired, man. man. I got fucking... They don't. They, they can get, kill this guy and not get they fired. They get paid vacation. Yeah, right. <laughs> an internal investigation. I'm just fucking. I'd be pulling over hot chicks if I were him. I'm yeah. Work all these lights and stuff. I can't believe I'm doing this though, for real. <laughs> Miss, I have to frisk you. I haven't done anything. I got to frisk you anyways. What I'm doing, I'm driving with my knees right now, trying to show you all this. I had a boy. That sounds safe. It's whatever, though. And he's driving on the wrong side of the road, right? It's whatever, though. Look, hey, I got away from, like, five cops already, dude. Yo, what? So it's whatever. I got my lights on right now. It's whatever. Yo, uh, what are you smoking, bro? (laughs) He's on that. He's He's on that crocodile. (laughs) He's on that crocodile. I'm on, like, Peoria Some bath salts? Yeah. (laughs) I'm trying to find a wasp. Nah, yeah, he would have bit the cop face. He's in Peoria. He said he's in Peoria. I might drive back to Tulsa, honestly. I got to turn on my lights, though. Oh yeah, because you don't, don't want to attract no attention. I got like half a tank now. I've been fucking burning gasoline all up and down the street, fucking going 120. Governor shuts off at like 120. Oh shit. Oh, that's a cop. Oh shit. There you go. Hell yeah. But um, I'll try to it find just went past to him. So I can show you my car. My brand new car. At the smoke shop. You dig? We dig. <laughs> we dig. <laughs> This guy clown. <laughs> we dig how stupid you are. I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> there you go, Timber. Told you everything right there. That's it. I, I, this I, is I, the Darwin theory just thinning itself out right now. I heard. I just, I just don't give a fuck. You want me to turn on the lights for y'all? Turn the lights. Turn the lights while you park, so a cop can run up and really smack stole your car. Ass. Uh, yep, he did. <laughs> I had two more times. Now you're gonna stand there and wait. For right. what? I would have dipped. <laughs> Get like, running. That's a hell of a suicide video there, sir. Uh, hold on, I got to put on my seatbelt. Oh, he yeah. Got back in the car. <laughs> and you got to put a seatbelt on. Hell of a day. Managing your business's finances shouldn't be any different. Good Lord. Wow. Good grief. <laughs> I hope that this guy's not planning on reproducing. You know, do the world a favor. Hey, yeah. Sterilization, folks. Sterilization. That's this white people doing white people stuff. <laughs> 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 yes. With yes. that said, it is time for us to wrap. I know you guys aren't happy about it, but uh, you know, no, no come, worry. We come to that time every week, and we we constantly reassure you that we'll be back right. next week. This isn't goodbye. It's just see you later. It's see you later. <laughs> <laughs>
So uh, one more time, we'll go around the room and give everybody a chance to say their their things. Uh, Larry the Lyrical, thanks yeah, for joining yeah. us. Hold it down, shout town one where, time. Where where is the next time people can see you? Like the most immediate. Most immediate, you could check me out tomorrow. I'll be at uh, Gallery Cabaret uh, between the times of 10 p.m. until, and then uh, Monday you could check us out at Red Line Tap. We getting it popping, baby. Right on, and if they want to check out more of your music, they can check you out on SoundCloud at Larry the Lyrical or La Tale. Yes, sir. Or you can check me out on Larry the Lyrical or La Tale at uh, YouTube. Check it out. We're getting it popping, y'all. Uh, Do that. Gotta, Larry Larry says he's got some stuff on the horizon. He's, he's waiting. Right. Yep. Yeah, me and Julio working on the uh, newest music video about to just drop soon. Maybe we can get so, a world premiere here. You feel me? On uh, the Laugh Rose radio show. Let's do it. Jay Sal. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming, buddy. Thank you. You can see me stealing a uh, Northwestern Campus cop car in a little bit. <laughs> We're going for donuts, baby. We're going for donuts tonight. Man, we going somewhere else if we get in a cop car. All right. <laughs> well, the only thing pretty much Heavenly that's going to be... The only, <laughs> the only thing believable is going to be Tim driving and us three in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One white dude with the brown people in the back. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, yeah. Hey, you can probably get away with it. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys going on live? <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely. We're gonna do it. We gonna Snapchat that one up. Okay. I'm like, where the sorority house is at, y'all? Where the white women at? <laughs> where, hey, where the white women at? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks for joining us. We will be back again on WNUR's freeform programming at this time next Saturday from midnight to two. I'd like to thank y'all for listening and to play us out. I got a little something special here from Cool G Rap and DJ Polo. Nice. It's the Ill Street Blues on WNUR FM, Evanston, and Chicago. Stay tuned. There's more great stuff on the Freeform programming. Yeah, uh, yeah word up.